Speaking of smart, 28 years at Michigan State. Uh, has not missed the tournament 25 consecutive years. That's insane. That doesn't even make sense. 25 years. The carpet is appropriately Spartan green. And Tom Izzo's <laughs> joining us. So, uh, by the way... A lot of people, myself included, I liked Marquette. You took the game over defensively late. Tom, one of the things that I, I talked to a coach, I talked to Jay Billis about this the other day. I said, if I said Tom Izzo, I said, I always think toughness and length. They've always got size and length. How would you define Tom Izzo when you think of what you've done the last 25 years, Michigan State basketball? A lot of good players and a lot of good assistant coaches, mm -hmm. Colin. It's been uh... – I've been lucky, you know, I mean, sometimes I, I you know, we've, we've kind of limped our way in, but for the most part, I think the schedule early that we played throughout all those years helped prepare us. And I think you know, usually we have some toughness to us. That's why I enjoyed your football prelude here. I, I I'm glad you had the lions up there. I think they're <laughs> going to be um, very good. I, I like the moves they've made too, but uh, you know, I've always had a football background and mentality with my boy, Mariucci and, all the other guys that I'm so close with. And, uh, and I think that's kind of helped my basketball way of looking at things. Cause I think at the end of the day, boy, Marquette, uh, you know, if I wasn't playing him, I would have picked them too. I, I love what shock has done there. You talk about a tough, good defensive team and they've got good offense. Uh, you look, uh, you know, Kansas state is a very good defensive team. Tennessee was in our bracket, you know, what they did to Duke, a physical game. And I think that's what we've been in the past. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. You know, we were talking uh, last hour, Jason and I were about, we like the NIL because I think it helps college basketball because I always thought the weakness of college basketball in the last seven, eight years was the G league could go pay a kid a half a million bucks. And if a kid doesn't, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. If you don't grow up with a lot of money and somebody offers you half a million bucks, I would take it. But now, if you guys can sprinkle a kid with a little money, he gets your coaching, he gets massive, massive exposure in the Big Ten or the SEC. If I was LeBron James, I'd send my kid to, co I'd send my kid to college. How do you look at the NIL? Well, not quite like you do, if I was to be honest with you. I mean, I'm all for kids making some money. But, you know, with no salary caps, the rumors you hear. And you got to remember – making money at 17, 18, 19. I mean, I didn't have any money growing up and it took me till I was 35, 40 to understand what money was, but you're a little more mature and older. I just worry what money usually does to people. There's a downside to it. So if it was enough money to go get a pizza and buy a coat and do this and do that, I'm all for it. With some of these rumors you're hearing on these football quarterbacks and that, I, you know, I question whether that's sustainable whether it'll work and what it'll do to the kid. Because remember, Colin, 1% of these football and basketball players is going to make it to the league. The rest of them, when the ball starts, stops bouncing, you know, what do they do? There's no cameo appearances. There's no podcast that you can do. There's nobody looking out for you. And I, I worry what we're doing to the, the, the players or the kids themselves. You know, it, it, um, the players, I think, are more skilled. They may not they, – they, they, they may – the game has changed. In the NBA, you used to be able to tackle guys and, uh, you know, hand check. Yeah. The game is more skilled. It's yeah. more international. But it's fascinating that one of the players that is tied to you forever is Draymond Green. It's, you know <laughs> – and I've always said, unless you watch the Warriors, you do not understand how valuable he is, not just defense, to the offense. He's a very clever passer. He's got an un, he's very verbal. So, but when you go back to your first year with him, was it all defense? Did he have any offensive skill at all? You know, it's funny. I mean, he wasn't a great defender then either. I mean, he came in about 280 pounds. He, he struggled. They had an injury his senior year. And, and yet uh, I think you're right about Draymond. What is really cool about Draymond it's not just his passing skills and it's not just his defense on the ball. He's a very good defender. He's got a high, high basketball IQ, but he might be, and I told Steph Curry this when I went out to games, he might be, he's like a, like a offensive lineman. You know, the running backs always give the offensive line a watch because they block for him. Draymond sets some of the great screens for Curry 
that free him for those shots. And people don't even look at that. We, we make tapes of his screening to show our bigs on how to screen. So <laughs> he's a unique guy. I love him. Um, yeah, there's some controversy to him. But as far as winning, man, there aren't many better winners, Colin, in any sport than Draymond. You, you know, um, it used to be you would go to high schools and recruit. Now it's AAU. Uh, it's a whole it's a whole different world. And so kids used to be, in my opinion, coached harder. So you often get a kid now that has never been coached hard. And they're just giving him swag. They're telling him how great he is. And you're an intense guy. Do you find, and so you have to create this tough kid. You have to mold this kid that can go beat a Marquette and play in the Big Ten. Is that a challenge or do you enjoy it? Uh, how do you deal with that? Because I've read that from multiple people in basketball that you're getting a softer kid. He's more skilled, but he he never been coached hard. Well, I think you're right on the money. And, and I really think it's a problem because, you know, you can win a lot of games with skill, but championships are usually won with the toughest guys that do the dirty work and persevere through the ups and downs. You know, I just saw a, a, a great story on Kevin Garnett, you know, and how hard he worked, how tough he was. I, I think it gets underlooked, you know. I think we always, the analytics are always about size, jumping ability, skill level, whether he can shoot it, throw it in a hundredth of a second, whether his hands are big enough to be a quarterback, all those things. They never measure the ticker. You know, they never measure the heart of a lion. They never measure the things, you know, great players, you know, are, are, are great, but it's the competitive great player that I think wins championships. And I think it's in all sports. I mean, you look at Tom Brady, even though he's a Michigan guy and I'm at Michigan State, you got to love, you know, how he's persevered through his career. You know, you you look at some of those great linebackers and then you look at, for us, the Magic Johnsons, you know, that have been here, meet myself, Mateen Cleaves, and what those guys meant. And they won championships because they were skilled, but they were tough. And you're right. It's harder now because if you demand something of a guy, he can just up and leave. That's right. Hey, come on and run some sprints or come on and shoot extra free throws. I'll, I'll go over here. I don't have to do that. People laugh about that. It's the truth. And uh, that's what worries me about the transfer rule and all that. Uh, you know, I think so many kids, I had so many kids that wanted to leave after a year. I mean, we all do. Because freshmen, that's a that's a tough year for a freshman. Even sure. if you're a non-athlete, it's tough. But um, those that stick with it uh, usually persevere and they learn how to handle adversity and that makes the winning all the all the better so you're at madison square garden which is just a great site for college basketball against kansas state i said i know it wasn't healthy i sat in the couch all weekend and opened up beer and ate chicken parm and nachos <laughs> that's all i did all weekend i told my wife it's the least healthy weekend march is killing me so you're going to Madison, <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Was there a point with your team this year? Because because I college basketball, I don't watch it until after December because the teams are so transitional. You watch Kansas no. in November. They don't even look like Kansas in March. Not even the same team. Was there a point that, you know, you have a very good big, uh, you, you play defense, but was there a point this year where you were like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get into the 25th tournament. Or did you know early this team's tough. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to cause some mayhem in this tournament. Well, what I knew early is we had two major injuries early at two starters out and we still survived. We beat Kentucky. We survived with Gonzaga got beat at the buzzer. We beat a Villanova team. So I, I knew we were, you know, could be good enough. And then yet the ebbs and flows of the season, um, you know, we had some, you know, some issues like everybody has and, there were some question marks I had, but I did. And I'm a guy that's usually the glass is half empty. My glass was half full because I had guys that have been here two, three, and four years. I knew what I had. I knew that I could motivate them in different ways. I knew that we weren't soft. And those things made a difference, yeah. you know, knowing your personnel. And I give Jerome a lot of credit. You know, he's got all those different kids from different schools because he was a new coach going in and He's done a remarkable job. So I guess you can do it both ways. I like the way we do it, and I'm 
I'm going to hang with it as long as I can. Yeah, a lot of you, you know, uh, Coach K left and Roy Williams and uh, Jay Wright, and you're just still plugging along. You look fantastic. It must be that Michigan, <laughs> all that great lake lifestyle in Michigan, but you look great, and you don't feel like you're close to retiring. Are you? I really don't. I guess I'm on the back nine, but I'm not on the 18th hole. But what happens in Michigan is your body freezes. So it doesn't <laughs> age. You know, it's like we it put us in a freezer so we don't age as much maybe. But no, you know what? I, I love what I do. I am worried about where our profession is going. You know, I, I think college athletics right now has got some big hurdles to climb. But as far as where I'm at, you know, I, I'm looking over at our football field. I love football. I I, I, I have some ownership in this university. You know, I talked to Mike, I talked to, to Jim Beheim. I did talk to Jay Wright a lot. You know, some of us have been at these institutions for 25, 30, 40 years. And uh, that's pretty cool. A lot of ways it's harder in a lot of ways, but you definitely have ownership. When I come to work every day, I don't go there as it's my workplace. I go there. It's like my university, you know, and that's pretty cool. Tom Izzo, love having him on annually. Another tournament. They go to Madison Square Garden to face a three-seed Kansas State. Glued to Marquette this weekend. They won it with defense late. As always, Coach, absolute pleasure to have you on. Well, thanks, Colin. I look forward to watching you. And then if we advance, maybe we'll get on again. All right, thank you. Tom Izzo, who and that really is an unbelievable sports stat. 20, in a real conference, 25 consecutive tournament appearances. Longest streak all time for a head coach. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.